With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, it's Tale of the Toaster. Good to see you here at Let's Play Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Adventure mode, the subspace emissary, very hard. 100% run, part 27. In this video, I'm going to be showing off all the alternative cutscenes which we didn't get to see. So that was Kirby Beats Mario. And during my playthrough of the subspace emissary, Wario took Peach away. So we're going to see what happens if Wario takes Zelda away. We still get to see Petey Piranha explode as ever, but Kirby's jumping out with Peach this time. That's the introduction of Wario, of course. The thumbnail for my original upload of episode 1, before I re-uploaded it in HD, because YouTube has a higher frame rate cap for HD videos, and the frame rate wasn't high. Stop talking and crying voice, it's not that sad. Yeah, I might as well explain that now I'm at it. Yeah, there's a different cap for the frame limit depending on whether you upload a video in HD and the crowd in this mid-air stadium area looked very weird if I didn't look upload in HD. So that's what I did to solve it. I'm surprised I ended up talking about that, but oh well, the mid-air stadium explodes as ever, but of course we've restored that now. We obviously 100%ed that long back. So now we get to see... Kirby and Peach flee the Sea of Clouds. Again, obviously it was Kirby and Zelda fleeing the clouds originally in my Let's Play, but now it's just that little bit different. We get Peach on our Warp Star instead, and then surprise! Oh, you look so shocked. And then there's Arwing down with Peach overboard. This is a very... Oh no, I'm, I'm not... I'm thinking of the wrong... Blah, 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 blah. Talking English. Okay, still do a barrel roll, do a barrel roll, do a barrel roll, etc. Our wings still get smacked down. But this time, a little difference, Peach gets knocked off instead. A little bit of trivia about Brawl's cutscenes. If I remember correctly, and also massively oversized Peach, if I've heard correctly, cutscenes take up 40% of Brawl's memory. Now that might be wrong, but for now, King Dedede steals Zelda is what we want to be watching. There is a little notice you unlock in Brawl for unlocking all the alternative cutscenes, so you'll want to play through the Subspace Emissary twice if you want to unlock that notice. I've obviously played through it 17 times now, so this cutscene's pretty similar to what we saw in the Let's Play, but of course Wario's gonna come driving by on his cargo, and instead of having a peach on it, he's instead gonna have Zelda, so King Dedede's going to be taking that. So we're pretty much watching the cutscene all up, the same cutscene over again. But we'll get to it. The change is coming. Change is coming, said the bank. I don't know, I'm sure there's a banking company which says that. But there's the change. There's Zelda, and she's kind of holding the cargo arm up. That's quite humorous. And we're seeing the same thing all over again. If you're viewing in movies mode, just a simple press of the start button will end the cutscene. So, still getting bombarded by Waldies. This is enticing commentary, isn't it? They're saying what's happening with the word still in front of it. Yeah, WarioWare, I actually won your GameCube game on eBay today. That was quite fun, that's the second bid I've ever won. The first was for an Olympic 50p. Well, actually, it was two. So, Bowser's surprise attack on Peach. Yeah, that should be the one we want to see. Most of the time, it's Peach we want to be involved in these cutscenes. But this one doesn't take long. Bowser just suddenly appears. Peach stands there. No wonder you're so easy to kidnap. You just stand there and let Bowser do whatever he wants. Oh, God, two Bowsers. Nobody knows what they're going to do to that Peach. But now they just envelop it in Happy Beat. So now we get a few more differences here. False Peach battles Link. Obviously in this level I played as Mario and Pit because I love playing as Mario. If you revived uh, Peach at the start of the game then you'd be playing as Link and Yoshi instead. And this is the cutscene you'd be seeing to start it off. So you can see that Link fired the arrow. And he's posing for battle and Peach is most displeased, which is exactly what I said for Zelda. And then Yoshi appears, and then in turn we get Link's misunderstanding, which is actually really cool. I mean, Mario's misunderstanding is quite cool as well, but he does the same kind of punch in another cutscene. 
Whereas this is the only time we actually see Link running and jumping fast and high, and a proper plummet stab. And now we get to see King Dedede Nabs defeated Mario, that's the one. Yeah, because we're defeating them and Link is huffing and panting and Dedede comes out of nowhere and swoosh and grabs them and oh look there's my girl! I'm a gold saver. Yes, Link uses the bow and arrow. Oh no, it's just Kirby that saves the day again. Final cut -a! Final cut pro! That'll be a nice thing to have because I still edit my videos with Windows Movie Maker. I think I started Let's Playing on emulation, so that was free, barring the GameCube controller port which my mother actually paid for. Uh, I was using a built-in mic, uh, King Dedede pins a badge on Zelda. Yep, so my microphone was free, the recording system was free because I just used Visual Boy's own recording function, and Movie Maker I had to begin with, so I was Let's Playing completely for free. Now I've spent £125 on an Elgato Game Capture HD. I spent £50 on a blue snowball, put a, putting a badge on a shoulder, makes it more pronounced. But the only thing I haven't paid for regarding Let's Plays, apart from getting sued for copyright or something, is editing software. I'm still stuck with Movie Maker. I would like some better editing software really, but it is nice being able to render really quickly with Movie Maker. So, oh, you saw that crossfade again, you saw it in the Let's Play and you see it now. And Bowser focuses on Zelda, he wants that. So now Bowser kidnaps Zelda, I think. Yeah, that's the right one, because Zelda's still a trophy. And this is the same plummet punt. Oh no, he doesn't quite do the... Yeah, he does. So that's what I was talking about earlier, when Link went for his ground stabby. And the King DDD brooch, or the DDD brooch, has flown off the Zelda trophy and Bowser falls off into his Klooper Cown. Klooper Cown car. Blue's Clues. What What does Blue's Clues have to do with anything? I don't know. I was focusing on the background there. Red Sky. Oh, Mario is definitely angry. But the Harvard flies away. And Kirby looks at the DDD brooch. And obviously we found out later in the story that he actually eats this DDD brooch and it will revive him later on. So, there can't be that many more. There's obviously Meta Knight and Lucario, which we might be getting to soon because we're pretty much done with the princesses. Yes, we defeated Lucario with Meta Knight, so now we're gonna see what happens if Lucario defeats Meta Knight. He poses, then smashes the trophy stand and Meta Knight is suddenly on his feet. And that's it. Are there any more? I don't think there's any more, right? There might be one... Nope, that's all of the alternate cutscenes. Oh, you can't see those! Oh yeah, I, so I showed them off in the last episode, silly me. I'm actually recording this before that one, because I wanted to record boss battles. And then I figured, might as well record this as well. But now you're going to see boss battles, so over to Postcom Toaster. And now I'm here in boss battles. I don't remember if I said a few seconds ago that I will be post-commentating this part so that I could concentrate on the gameplay when I was doing it and also what to say when watching it back. But in case I didn't say that, yes, this is post-commentary. So we start off with Ray Quasar. I picked Wolf for boss battles mode because he's a fairly normal character. He's only got one jump. He's only got a short range projectile, and like most of the characters in boss battles, he relies on his back air and down smash to do the most damage, like most characters. He does have the reflector, which is an advantage, but he's still fairly normal. So now we're fighting PT Piranha, his cages are empty in boss battles mode. Obviously they had Zelda and Peach in them during the story. And the sky is also nice and blue and happy, instead of being all dark like it was before. So the music's also changed in boss battles mode, of course when we were fighting Petey for the first time, he had some music from Super Mario Bros. 3, but now it's just the generic boss battle theme, with two different boss battle themes, and the final boss gets his own piece of music. 
So now we're fighting Master Hand. The boss order in boss battles mode is random. And the later you fight a boss, the faster their attacks will be. And the more health they'll have. That attack right there, for some reason I call it the dwindle. And I was just failing at boss battles over and over again back when I was still learning. And I was like, oh, I got hit by the dwindle again. I'm going to call it the dwindle now, because why not? That's the first bit of damage I took in the run. But no matter, because Master Hand, he doesn't have much health, even if he's the ninth boss. The tenth boss is always the same. So, this here is the all-star rest area. There's three heart containers over there. You can use them to heal. You've only got one life in boss battles, so you need to spread those heart containers out evenly if you can't just go through all the bosses without taking any sort of damage. The All-Star Rest Area itself is based on a kind of rest area from the Great Cave Offensive in Kirby Superstar. Oh, by the way, Galleon's background is chosen randomly. He's obviously got two different backgrounds he could have because he had two different fights during the subspace emissary and also now we're fighting crazy hand and his trophy is in the subspace emissary category of the trophy gallery even though he wasn't in the subspace emissary at all but yeah crazy hand just like master hand he doesn't take that much damage so all-star rest area its music in melee was actually a remix of the all-star rest area or well, the rest area in kirby superstar but in this game, it's just a plain old remix of Brawl's main theme. But yeah, a common conspiracy with the teleporter in the All-Star Rest areas. People seem to think that if you use a heart container to heal, but then you go into the teleporter, the healing will stop. That was true in Super Smash Bros. Melee. You had to wait for the healing to complete before you went in. But that's not how it is in Brawl, you can just go straight into the teleporter, even when you're healing, and then you'll just be brought back down to 0% again. While the normal heart container's item only heals 100%, in boss battles mode and also all-star mode, hence the name all-star rest area, it will completely heal you. So Porky, I never discussed his weaknesses during the Let's Play, he's got very strange weaknesses, he doesn't resist anything, but he's only weak to two types of attack. Darkness and Aura. Darkness is only used by Ganondorf and White Pikmin, while of course Aura is exclusive to Lucario. Meta Ridley's time limit is now gone, so that makes him a little easier. Wolf and other characters with reflectors can just dominate that boss. They can reflect that projectile, and it'll take out pretty much half of his health. So the boss order... Because bosses get faster and harder to beat, depending on how far they are into the run, you want to try and get Rayquaza and Dewon early on, because Dewon's probably the hardest, and Rayquaza gets stupidly fast later on into boss battles mode. And then you want to keep bosses like P.T. Piranha and Ridley later on. Ridley we happen to be fighting right now. Something to note is that when the announcer says go in each boss battle, you can actually start moving and attacking before the announcer even says that. So it's a good idea to start moving towards a boss before that is said. So this mode is actually unlockable. You unlock it by beating the subspace emissary and classic mode. You need to beat classic mode because the mode features Master Hand, who you wouldn't... Well, Master Hand does appear in the subspace emissary, but you don't fight him. So, of course, Marth is very, very good at this mode. He's got his counter, and his forward air, and his down smash. And then there's the ice climbers who can do loads of damage, and they've got the ice element, which a lot of bosses are weak to. Toon Link was recommended by the Smash Brothers website, because he can use his down air to suspend himself above bosses like Dewon and Porky Minch which does help, and he's also got very quick aerials, like his back air, and lots and lots of projectiles. So, fans of Super Smash Bros. Melee often say, oh, I wish the air dodge in Brawl was like it is in Melee. In Melee, the air dodge could actually carry you in a direction for a certain distance, but then it would leave you vulnerable. I prefer the air dodge in Brawl because but you need 
to use the air dodge a lot during boss battles mode. And if it left me vulnerable, then I'd be in a big trouble. There's more Ice Mario 11 in this Let's Play. Just can't seem to get rid of that trophy. So we're fighting Taboo. He is always last in boss battles. So he can end a run with his one-hit KO off waves, even at the worst of times. I've beaten boss battles mode on intense difficulty, which I didn't actually specify. I am on intense difficulty right now. Not very hard. I've completed it on intense with 30 characters. The only characters I haven't completed it with are Wario, Samus, Pikachu, Kirby, and Ike. Kirby and Ike are actually pretty good. I'm surprised I haven't done it with them yet. Here come the off waves! Of course I dodged them, otherwise I wouldn't be showing this run. So... A lot of people really struggle to beat boss battles on intense difficulty, so people often complain there is a trophy which you unlock for beating this on intense difficulty. And on the challenges mode, you can't actually open that with a golden hammer. Challenges mode I'm not going to go into detail on because that's not a part of this let's play. But yeah, you can't unlock that trophy with the golden hammer unless you're playing the PAL version. So better get practicing boss battles if you want that trophy. I have it. I did actually record the finale of this let's play. I edited all my co-commentators audio tracks, but then I lost my own. So that's all gone. So that video is probably going to be late. It was a bad way to ruin my birthday. It was already bad enough because my teacher died. But anyways, we beat Taboo, meaning we beat boss battles mode. Yay! And we get a WOW! INCREDIBLE! And that's the end. See you in the next episode.